If there was an award for most important SLR ever made, I would nominate the Pentax Spotmatic. Not only did it introduce through the lens metering to the mass markets, which was an important milestone in an era of massive technical innovation in the camera world, it was also for a time the world's best selling SLR that hasn't lost any of its charm or practicality today, nearly 60 years later. The Pentax Spotmatic embodies the best of what I've come to expect from a 1960s Japanese 35mm SLR. Simple, sturdy, well-built and reliable. Everything you need to take pictures without anything to get in the way. It's an all-mechanical camera with a beautiful industrial design and a lasting legacy that started off one of the most recognizable and beloved nameplates in the analog world that still maintains a cult following to this day. Before the 60s, in-camera light meters were not commonplace. There had up to that point been a number of interesting and unusual implementations like mounting a meter cell to the top or to the side of the lens, but TTL metering as we understand it today hadn't yet been implemented. That was until 1960 in Cologne, Germany at Photokina where Pentax or the Asahi Optical Company that owned Pentax presented their Pentax Spotmatic prototype, which was a camera that featured a number of technical innovations, including a 1 over 2,000th maximum shutter speed cloth horizontal focal plane shutter, a new to Pentax bionet mount, as well as a TTL meter. The TTL meter design that Pentax was proposing with the original Spotmatic prototype was a spot meter that was mounted on a swing arm that would pop out once the light meter was switched on. The prototype that was presented at Photokina was generally quite well received. However, it ended up taking Pentax four years to actually bring the Spotmatic onto the market. In 1964, Pentax announced the Spotmatic model line to the masses in general. However, the design that launched as a viable camera was somewhat different from the prototype they presented. The 1 over 2,000th shutter was replaced with a 1 over 1,000th more standard cloth focal plane shutter, and the mechanical bayonet mount was replaced with a more standard at the time M42 lens mount. And finally, the TTL spot meter was replaced with a TTL average meter that took a meter reading off of the ground glass as opposed to being a spot meter mounted on a screen. These modifications were made both in part to make the camera simpler and less expensive to produce, but also the spot meter in particular was scrapped in favor of an average meter because the thought was at the time that the general public would have an easier time using an average meter over a spot meter. However, the Spotmatic name stuck which is kind of interesting because the spot part of the name no longer made any sense. By the way, the Matic part of the Spotmatic name I think comes from the fact that the camera was designed to work with automatic lenses, which meant that the shutter would be able to trigger the aperture stopping down when the shutter release was pressed, allowing you to focus with the aperture wide open, so long as the light meter was switched off. Regardless of these changes, the Pentax Spotmatic was a smash success. The Pentax Spotmatic is a very simply designed, well-constructed SLR camera. It's made entirely out of glass and metal, and without a lens attached, weighs 621 grams. On the top of the camera, you'll find your shutter advance lever with the frame counter, as well as your threaded shutter release. There's a small cocked indicator in between the frame counter and the shutter release that turns orange when the shutter is ready to fire and turns gray once it's been fired. The shutter fires with a soft and satisfying click and mirror shake or mirror slap is very well controlled due to the soft return mirror box that Pentax designed. It is overall not very obtrusive at all. You've got your standard shutter speed dial with speeds set to one thousandth of a second all the way down to one second marked on it. It also serves as the ASA adjustment so you can set your film speed for the light meter. It's 
can be set in third stops from 20 ASA all the way up to 1600. The viewfinder is nice and bright and fairly big as well, and when paired with a 55mm lens, it has a 0.88 times magnification. Unfortunately, there is no exposure information visible in the viewfinder at all, except for the light meter design, which I suppose isn't too big of a deal. The light meter is a center the needle type readout, which is fairly easy to use. In addition to the light meter, there is a Fresnel focusing aid in the middle of the viewfinder screen so that you can have at least the micro prism to help you focus correctly. On the other side of the prism, you have the serial number as well as the SP Spotmatic model designation, the rewind for the film, and this small metal disc allows you to indicate what type of film you have loaded into the camera or if the camera is empty. Currently this one's empty, but it can be set to daylight color, tungsten color, and panchromatic for black and white. On the front of the camera, we have, of course, the M42 lens mount. I love having the M42 lens mount, it gives you access to such a massive selection of different lenses. Not just from Pentax, but from other brands such as Zeiss and others. Now, the camera shipped originally and launched with a 50mm f1.4 and a 55mm f1.8 Super Tacomar kit lens from Pentax. I have the 55mm f1.8 lens and it is a fantastic, good performing lens. The automatic timer lever, the switch for turning on the light meter. Switching on and using the light meter with the little button or switch on the side of the lens mount is a little bit awkward until you get used to it. Now the light meter functions only as a stop down meter, which means that switching it on also stops down the lens, which means that the light meter switch also acts as a depth of field preview. Now unfortunately the light meter relies on mercury batteries which have been banned now and are no longer available and haven't been available for quite a long time. There are replacements for this style of battery but some of them tend to be quite expensive. However during my research I found out that the light meter circuitry inside of the Pentax Spotmatic is based off of a bridge circuit which in theory means that it is voltage independent so you don't have to find the 1.33 volt alternatives you can use other alternative batteries provided you can get them to fit into the battery slot. While the camera has flash ports and it syncs at 1 60th of a second, there is no flash shoe on the camera, so you'll have to use a clip-on cold shoe that attaches to the viewfinder entrance, which I absolutely hate. I hate that thing, but I think only because I'm somebody who wears glasses and adding that extra layer of distance between me and the viewfinder in addition to the glasses just makes it really hard to see the entire viewfinder when the clip is attached, so I don't have it on when I'm using the camera. And on the back of the camera we have your viewfinder entrance with the clips on it so that you can attach the clip-on cold shoe as well as the Asahi Optical Code of Japan script and the model designation 23102 which is the designation for the late model of the original Pentax Spotmatic. Now there are technically two different iterations of the original Pentax Spotmatic produced from 1964 to 1967. The first model was produced from 1964 to 1965 and is the rarer of the two. It is marked with the model number 231 and is produced with the serial numbers up to 2,016,000. And then from 1965 until the end of the first Pentax Spotmatic's lifespan in 1967, the second iteration was produced, the 23102 model, which starts at serial number 2,016,000 and up. Between the two, there are some minor visual and mechanical differences and slight improvements made, but none of them are super significant. I treat them both as the same model when I'm talking about the Pentax Spotmatic because they are very close to identical, if not completely identical. The first version from 1964 to 65 is quite rare. However, there were loads of the second iteration made from 1965 until 1967, which is the version that I have. You've also got strap lugs for a strap, and on the bottom of the camera, you have a threaded standard tripod mount, your 
release for the film rewind and the battery door for the battery. The Pentax Smartmatic is a very well designed, sturdy and reliable SLR that I absolutely love using. Pentax made thousands and thousands of these things and they haven't been super hyped up like other SLRs, so they're still not terribly expensive. The original Pentax Spotmatic remained in production from 1964 until 1967, until it was replaced with the Pentax Spotmatic II, sometimes just called the SP2. During the Pentax Spotmatic's production run, Pentax went on to produce their one millionth SLR. And together with its successors, the Pentax Spotmatic went on to become the best-selling SLR lineup from 1965 until 1970. In fact, from 1966 until 1969, Pentax Spotmatic lineup outsold the entire catalogs of Nikon and Canon combined. Now, the Pentax Spotmatic owes much of its initial success to its reliable and easy to use TTL meter. And the success of the Spotmatic with the TTL meter went on to establish through the lens metering as something that photographers came to expect when purchasing a camera, and it was also a milestone on the journey towards other features like automatic exposure which relied on an in-body through lens light meter. The Pentax Spotmatic nameplate went on to leave a lasting impact on the camera market and spurred on a massive loyal following of photographers who continue to use and adore these cameras to this day. Now, thanks to its general commercial success, the Pentax Spotmatic is sometimes mislabeled as the first camera with through the lens metering. However, that credit technically goes to the Topcon RE Super, released a year earlier in 1963. However, that camera wasn't nearly as successful as the Spotmatic and also, technically speaking, the Pentax Spotmatic prototype showed up before the Topcon RE Super hit the market. However, the RE Super was the first commercially available consumer camera with a TTL meter that you could just buy off the shelf a year before Pentax got to the market. The Pentax Spotmatic cameras were among some of the most prominent and important in the history of analog photography. In 1973, Pentax retired the Spotmatic nameplate in favor of their K-mount cameras which featured the new bayonet mount that they had designed and introduced to keep up with everyone else on the market who had already done so, some of them many years earlier. However, the technical specs and the basic idea behind the simple Pentax Spotmatic that was released in 1964 would carry on in its technical descendant, the Pentax K1000, which was just the student camera just about everybody learned on one and is one of the longest running SLRs of all time, remaining in production into the end 90s, and it was also my first mechanical SLR. If I had to choose just one SLR to use until the end of time, I would probably still pick my Nikon FM, but the Spotmatic is a close runner up. I absolutely love shooting with this camera. It's just a pleasure to work with. And every time I pick it up after leaving it for a while, I ask myself why I haven't been using it this entire time. It is simply one of my favorites and one of the greatest of all time.